That's great, yeah. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Um, it's so great to have you here with us, of course, and thank you so much to all of our press in the room. Of course, we have so many of you here, and so many of you watching online as well. Do remember, if you do have any questions for us, get them into us, and we will do our best to get them to our panel. Right. Okay, let's start then. Raise your hands if you have a question. Yes, please. The last slide. Hello, it's JP from Radio International. We really are very happy to be here and we enjoyed two great semi-finals, a nice rehearsal now, and we're looking forward to the grand final. The question from my side is um, uh, that the BBC made a great choice to get you, you guys as, as hosts, and uh, how did you find out to be host of Eurovision Song Contest? And uh, how would you say you work, in, you work together is, uh, in this great event here? Thank you so much. Who yes. should, how about... Um, I would say the biggest takeaway for me from this, um, I mean, Graham and I have known each other for a while, haven't we? Um, but uh, we had never met us ladies, and it has been quite, quite lovely to work with two girls that I have such respect for, and I love that I can watch them from the wings and just think, I'm getting to stand shoulder to shoulder with them. And I, I, I'm really grateful that these two women in particular um, have been standing with me because it's not an easy gig. It's quite full on. And um, so, yeah, love you to bits. You're great, gorgeous. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's go to, uh, you caught my eye first right down here. Did we get the one down? Oh, hi. Hello. Um, it's actually uh, Trey Pim from We got a mic for you, mate. Don't worry, you don't have to strain your voice. Uh, Trey Pim from. Oh, so loud. <laughs> I think the joke's gone well. <laughs> it's Trey Crim from The Independent. <laughs> uh, Hannah, I wanted to ask, obviously you have an international following, um, even more this week, but because of Ted Lasso, how, you, how many Ted Lasso fans have been recognising you around Liverpool and what sort of reaction have you had from people when you've been around, out and about? Do you know what? It's been really lovely, actually, because, of course, the show is kind of more... Popular. For those of you who don't know what he's talking about, it's Ted Lasso, Apple TV. Um, <laughs> uh, I didn't think that it was as popular as it is here, but when people start going, oh my god, Rebecca, and you're like, no, it's not again. <laughs> That's when you know that something has finally reached these shores, so I'm, I'm really thrilled. There's been quite a, quite a lot of it, so uh, yeah, we're finally being watched on this side of the pond. Thank you so much. We'll have a question online uh, to... Julia, Julia, how yeah. do you prefer now? Julia! <laughs> yeah. Okay. International variant. <laughs> yes. Okay, from Andy uh, from Belarus. Does Hard Kiss plan to participate in Eurovision in the future? I was afraid of this question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Actually, we uh, tried to participate in, two, uh, in 2016. Oh, yeah, in Ukrainian selection. That year, Jamala won the competition and then she won the Eurovision. So, and now the Hard Kiss opened the Eurovision in 2023. So, we will see what will be in future. I won't say no, and I won't say yes. <laughs> we will say, I, I really love the audience of Eurovision. So now, uh, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> are, you more, can I just ask, are you more likely to do it now you've done this, or less likely now you've seen how hard it is? Under pressure. More likely. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Excuse me. Thank you. Alicia, were you ever asked to do your vision no. your mystique then? No. That's no problem. A bit of unplugged flex would have been quite right for you. I'm not sure. Well, everybody was loving the rap that you did the other night. So yeah, we'll leave it there. We'll, we'll just leave that there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go here. Yeah, please. Hey, I'm Wayne Moore from Cannes, in Hi. Israel. Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, uh, Hannah, um, you rocked Israeli fans when you did this, <laughs> yes, and yeah. everybody's performing as well. Uh, why did you do it, and uh, it, it, is it because you love the uh, unicorn? I love all the songs. Have you not seen me dancing like an absolute <laughs> lunatic to everything? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I mean... That song and many others in the competition. <laughs> oh, so you keep being diplomatic. No, I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
Okay, and just one thing, please, for Graham. Yeah. We brought you a special gift from Israel. Finally! Are <laughs> <laughs> you waiting for it? Can I come? Yes, please do. Security. It's a hidden version of your book, Home Stretch. Oh, wow. wow. And it's a, yeah, it's the first copy in Hebrew, especially That's for you. Cool. That's gorgeous. And Thank you very much. much. Yes, and I'm happy if you can sign those. I will, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you paid full price. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Any more questions? We've got a gentleman here on the end of the room there. Oh, thank you so much. Hi, uh, uh, Charlie Sohn from uh, Politico. Um, so, uh, t I think it was today that uh, uh, it was sort of revealed that uh, Vladimir, uh, Vladimir Zelensky uh, has been uh, requested to speak at the festival, and the festival uh, rejected it. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go down the line, if possible, and, and just hear your guys' reactions to that. Um, you know, there's this sort of framework of, of Eurovision as an apolitical competition, but at the same time, it's been supportive of Ukraine. So uh, how do you feel about this decision? As but as far as I'm aware, that's an EBU thing. It's not even kind of BBC Studios or anything. So we haven't been involved in that at all. So it's just, as, as far as I know, that's an EBU decision. And as you know, the EBU, you know, they rule with an iron fist. So what they say uh, goes. Yeah, All right. Do you have a reaction? Let's go Sorry. to a question down here. Why don't we go to our next question? Well, that's our reaction. Yeah. Okay. That happened. Hi, I'm GJ from OutTV. Uh, my question is for Hannah, who I think the internet has now legitimately called mother, and I think we all agree. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, 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 Oh, good. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, your first hosting gig was only a month earlier at the Olivier Awards, which you were smashingly at. You were consoling winners who were overjoyed and stuff like that. What did you take from that that you were able to apply here? Do you know what? That's a brilliant question because, yes, as you say, it was my first ever presenting gig. And this, this subtle little one just being my second. <laughs> um, I would say that the same with the Olivier's, the winners and the losers, Everyone makes the effort of their lives. And so we are all, all of us in here, all of them on stage, everyone backstage, we're all just people trying to put on a beautiful, massive, joyous show and be unified by music. So, you know, it's very much our job to be there for the ups and the downs, for the winners and the losers, and that's why I wanted to get involved. Thank you, and we have a question from online to Alicia, from Robert. How is she finding Liverpool? How are you finding I, Liverpool? I love Liverpool. I've been coming here for years and I've got such amazing memories of performing here because there's a passion that you feel when you come here and an energy. I've been blown away all week by the love and the enthusiasm and the never-ending noise and I'm loving it. <laughs> I can't sleep. I'm still awake at 3 a.m. just trying to calm down. <laughs> the energy is fantastic. It's one of the best cities and I'm so happy for them that it's here and they've done a brilliant job. They've made everyone feel welcome. Everyone feels a part of this event and it, it just feels really special. It's just, yeah, the home of music, right? Do you have time to walk around? No. I've walked around the hotel. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the arena uh, yeah. I'm, I'm lucky. I'm, I need some fresh air. Like I wake up, I, like 48 hours of not going outside. It's crazy. So, yeah, if we can get like two minutes outside, we feel like we're winning. I was saying we're like hamsters in glittery jumpsuits. Yeah. <laughs> Just like this cage wheel. Yeah. We're in this bubble. But it's the best and most beautiful bubble I think I've ever been in. It's fantastic. Awesome. Uh, let's go to a question this gentleman here in the yellow t-shirt in the middle. Sorry to make you guys go to the middle of the road. Uh, hi, Rory Gannon, that Eurovision site. Uh, Julia, um, the British humour is sort of known for being quite dry, uh, and obviously, you know, hosting with uh, British uh, amazing celebrities and uh, icons here. How easy was it for you to adapt to sort of British humour? And uh, I guess the question also just for Hannah and Alicia, how was it for you to sort of take on Yulia and that as well? Well, uh, with, with girls, I feel so much joy and happy, happy moments and happy hours. I really, I, I, I'm trying to remember it, remember the, whole, the every moment and a lot of humour, yeah. 
definitely. <laughs> Especially on the backstage when nobody listens to us. <laughs> oh, but someone's always listening, just so you know. Oh God, are they <laughs> always? <laughs> oh my God. All the time. <laughs> um, but uh, they made me laugh a lot and that helps me to relax because of course I'm nervous. It's my first hosting ever in my life and it's not my language that I was born with. Uh, so yeah, but yesterday we had a joke about Q on the stage of Eurovision and I didn't know this word before our rehearsal and I was just asking Guel, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and girls explained me everything immediately and they really helped me. You are so, such a natural. Yeah. For the fact the fact that you've never done this before, it's so impressive. I think you've got, you know, the fact that it's not your first language. On to, uh, when you closed the link, uh, yeah, second yes, semi-final, yes. we thought she planned what she said, but she didn't even, she's naturally funny without trying. When you said Saturday, she went, Saturday! And I was like, oh, she's taking the mickey out of the British way. And she just was like, Saturday? I was like, oh, okay. We were cracking up. She didn't realise she was being funny. And you are, you're just such a natural. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I'm pretending. <laughs> no, you're wonderful. I'm Don't own do it. Julia, how have you been finding the Scouse accent, the Liverpool accent? <laughs> That was hard. <laughs> I, I thought that I was learning English, but when I came to Liverpool in the States, and I was trying, trying to talk to the taxi driver. <laughs> Jumping in the deep end, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Uh, uh, Graham, I did. I do have a question for you also. Oh, yeah. um, it is: What would you have? What would have the late Sir Terry Wogan have thought about the UK hosting this year's event? I mean, I think he'd been thrilled uh, because you know, bringing it home, it's such a different atmosphere. And I must say, I didn't know what it was going to be like. You know, I go every year. This is like my 14th, and uh, and the atmosphere is always great. But honestly, I don't, I, this sounds like I'm just making up saying this from here, but the atmosphere in the semi-finals, I've never felt anything like that mm. at another Eurovision. This crowd seems so happy to be here, so ready for Eurovision. Uh, it, it, it sort of transformed the whole thing. It's not just, you know, an audience waiting to see a show. They're part of it. They're yeah. so keen and invested in it. Uh, I love it. It's just great. Eurovision's taken on. It seems so serious now. When you first started hosting, which was about 14 years ago. 14, yeah. How has your style of commentary changed over the time? Because I think, I don't know about you guys, but I personally think we're going through a kind of golden age of Eurovision. Um, I really think the shows for the last few years have been great, uh, really good songs. And I think that that time of, you know, there was always kind of a nostalgic thing and a kitschy thing and a campy thing. And there's a little bit of that left, but actually now it's just a bunch of great pop songs. Um, and it's creating stars, like Maniskin, you look and see what happens with Sam Ryder, Duncan Lawrence is on that stage. You know, it's, it is a serious song it's contest just phenomenal now. Voices. It is a serious it's song phenomenal contest. Phenomenal voices. And, and so, you know, I still have a joke in the commentary box, but they're different jokes. Uh -huh. You know, you're finding humour in different things. You're not just, you, you can't laugh at the acts anymore because they're so good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's take questions from the middle. Let's try and go to the middle because we're all yeah. going to the side. Yes, please. The middle. He stood. He stood. Yeah. <laughs> That's how the, the book starts, Graham. Dobro <laughs> vechera. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Sashko. I'm with Razum for Ukraine. First of all, on behalf of Ukrainians everywhere, you guys are doing an incredible job. Thank you so much for presenting for us. Um, my question is to Yulia. Um, I know, everybody, what a shocker. Um, uh, Yulia. First of all, as a follow up, Ukrainians are ready for the heart kiss to bring victory ready? back to Ukraine. <laughs> so we are very excited about that possibility. And um, I'd love to ask you, how does it feel being a presenter in terms of being the sole representation of one of the hosts uh, independently representing your country? Uh, and uh, maybe talking about the opening about Mayaki. Uh, well, for me, it's a huge responsibility uh, because because in Ukraine we have war now, and 
we receive news every morning. Every my every morning starts with with reading the news, and sometimes it's super hard to to smile to bring the joy. But I'm trying to be professional, so. It's responsibility. I feel the support of Ukraine, of Ukrainians. I receive lots of messages and comments and it lifts me up every time. And I, I'm so happy that Ukrainians feel the joyful moments of Eurovision, that they are proud of what we've done together on the stage of Eurovision, that there's lots of Ukraine in Eurovision, lots of Ukrainian performers, songs, Ukrainian language on the stage of Eurovision. Hannah. Hannah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> I want to have a go. <laughs> so I, I hope that in these dark times, we bring some, some joy and some light uh, to, to Ukrainian homes and families. <laughs> about, about your language, but French one. Uh, we have a question from online. Don't uh, ask it... me to answer in French. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> in this Eurovision, you are delivering the French language bits of the show. Uh, did you practice, uh, or like, did you do something for that? Uh, well, um, I, I studied it uh, at school, <laughs> okay. and, and I, I've always, I always was. Uh, until you then don't go there for a while. So I would say I'm now conversational rather than fluent. But, uh, you know, if I was back there for a couple of dinners and some wine, I'd probably be fairly fluent again. <laughs> just saying. But I was just keen to, you know, you, you, you want to um, <clears throat> show the hands across the water and, and, and try giving languages another go. And I just think it's that fine line of wanting to be respectful to a language and include it, but not you know, screw it up, so I hope I'm doing okay <laughs> Can you do your next link in Scouse? <laughs> Full on Scouse. Do you know what? I was just about to swear, so no. <laughs> I'm already speaking Scouse. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, Alicia, with the UK, this one is from online, with the UK hosting on behalf of the Ukraine, are you happy with how the show's coming across? I couldn't be prouder. And you go down that rabbit hole, don't you, when you finish a show, and sometimes you look online, and I saw some comments yesterday which really made me smile, and people saying how proud they are of the BBC, how they put on such a brilliant show, it's a masterclass in live television, and I just think the whole thing, the, everything about it, there's just so much to be proud of. Um, I, it, the whole thing is really touching, and I heard Graham talking about it earlier, you know, this year it's taken on new meaning and a deeper meaning, there's so much heart and joy. Um, yeah. And I just feel super proud of everyone. And Hannah said it takes so many people to put this together. I can't even get my head around just how incredible all the crew are, the long hours. You know, everything is timed to perfection. You know, it makes up our job actually quite small yeah. in the grand scheme of things. So I'm just super proud of everybody. Yeah. Also, so I think, much. isn't it that thing, it's still a party. It's still this huge it celebration. Is. But because of Ukrainian involvement and because of the Ukraine, it's a party with such heart exactly. and soul exactly. and kind of a deeper purpose. Yes. And like, I don't think, like those semi-finals, you know, I cried quite a few times yeah. with you. That's yeah. not something you normally do during exactly. Eurovision. No, and, and I love that, that it's got that extra layer this yeah. year. It's, right. it's, it's certainly a Eurovision very much apart from all others, I think, yes. ever because, because of that. Thank you. I promise. I promise you, yeah. Well, Greg, you, so, you sort of uh, stole my thunder there. My name is Eugene Greedy. I'm, uh, I'm with that tie, that bow <laughs> tie. <laughs> uh, I'm with Laviv today. Leah, you might remember a few years ago, seven or eight years ago, you were on our, our cover. Uh, I just want to say you, you all look, sound very, very good, great all week. Uh, Yulia, I had a question about your dress. So, Lviv today was known for a fashion magazine before the war. We actually had a life that didn't have to do with politics and war all the time. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about, that's the nicest dress I've ever seen. I want to know where you got it. I want to know what it means. Uh, anything you want to talk about? About my, my first dress? The dress that you were wearing at the show today and at uh, uh, one of the dress rehearsals for the semi final. Oh, today? Your beautiful... Oh, like ethnic, like ethnic yeah, dress. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, 
I'm trying to wear all the dresses by Ukrainian designers or Ukrainian brands and it was ethnodim, it's uh, ethnic, uh, but it's modern, so it's a mix of modern and ethnic elements, they use, they, they do lots of Ukrainian modern vishivanka. Uh, you, you might see uh, Vishivanka on uh, Beatles, on the Beatles sta statues uh, in Liverpool. I'm proud to, to represent my country even, even uh, like uh, fa in fashion way on the stage of Eurovision. So my dresses and jewelry and shoes all made by Ukrainian designers. So I'm very proud to show that we have fashion and it's awesome, and super modern. And I would like everybody to see. <laughs> <laughs> I have another okay. question down here. Sorry, okay. yeah. Hi there, my name is Tom Hendrick. Hello, uh, you. Is for <laughs> Hannah. Um, I actually asked uh, fans of Ted Lasso uh, what to ask you, and I've chosen the best one. Um, so you are a West End star, you are a TV and a film star, you are now a presenting star. What's your next plan for world domination? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I just I just that for a moment, please. Um, well, <laughs> I'm, it sounds like a plug. It absolutely is. <laughs> uh, I'm doing a one-woman Christmas special oh. in in two weeks' time. That'll film at the London Coliseum. So, uh, trying to bring my my singing and screen work together. And uh, yeah, that's what I want to do next. I'm a little bit shocked by your question. <laughs> okay, and we have one more question for all of you. Uh, what are you looking forward the most in tomorrow's night show? Graham. Uh, I'm looking forward to announcing the winner. Have a drink. Keep going. Lovely. Hannah. Hannah, what about yourself? Um, I would say I'm most looking forward to. Sam Ryder and the magnificent group of people he has performing with them who made me cry. I got very overwhelmed in rehearsals and, and had to walk off for a second because it's a, a very sobering performance and teaches us all to be grateful for what we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I'm waiting for, for the flag parade because it's such a great opening mm -hmm. and lots of Ukrainian stars, Eurovision mm -hmm. stars and Ukrainian songs and it it's so it's magnificent. You will see, definitely. I'm looking forward to absolutely everything, and then a good party after. We're going to have a backstage party while yeah. you guys do the results. Yeah. By the way, we're all yeah, they're going to be absolutely yeah. battered. We're going to have a yeah. nice rest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we've got time for with our presenters. I know, I know, I know. Well, we haven't got an excuse tonight, have they? Have do, they do have to get back to rehearsals because of tomorrow's fire, because it is kind of a big deal. I don't know. Uh, so, please, give another round of applause for our amazing presenters.